In this video, I'll be talking about Fermat's theorem. So let's see what is the statement of the Fermat's theorem. It says that let P be a prime. So we consider a P to be a prime. And suppose that P does not divide A, where A is an integer. Then A raised to power P minus 1. This is congruent to 1 modulo P. So this is the Fermat's theorem. And in the explicit, sometime we also call this as Fermat's little theorem. So here I can write this as Fermat's little theorem. And for the proof, let me just simply consider the multiples of this integer A. So let us write, we uh, consider the first p minus 1, we consider the first p minus 1 multiples of a. So let's see, let's write these multiples of a, that is a, 2a, 3a, up till so on, because we have considered first p minus 1 multiples of a. And we see that none of these two integers are congruent to each other, modulo p. On contrary, we would say that suppose that these two integers are congruent to each other. So now in this situation, let me to say that Ra is congruent to Sa modulo P. So this is the kind of the integers that we have considered. We have considered multiples of A. So now we have considered Ra and Sa which is multiple of A. And now let's keep the condition on R and S without loss of generality. I have considered R is smaller than S. And they both lie between 1 and p minus 1. So now you can see that we can cancel a from both sides. So we can see that we can cancel a from both sides. And in my earlier video, I have talked about the cancellation property. So that there we have discussed c a is congruent to c b modulo n. So we can cancel c from this both side and we can write a is congruent to b modulo n. If the GCD of n and c is equal to 1. If this condition does not hold and suppose that CA is congruent to CB modulo N and we take D is the GCD of C and N. In that case, this when we cancel it out, this is A is congruent to B modulo. So N must be divided by the GCD that is D. But now in this our question, we can see that as P is a prime. So from this condition, we can note it down. That because P does not divide A and P is a prime, so obviously we can say that the GCD of A and P is equal to 1. So noting that the GCD of P and A is equal to 1, we can cancel and hence we say that R is congruent to S modulo P. But this is not possible because in this circumstances what will happen is that P will divide R minus S and R and S they are smaller than P. So P minus 1 is strictly less than P. So this is not possible. So we say that the given set of the integers that we have considered here, they are incongruent to each other. So we say that A, 2A up till P minus 1A integers, they are incongruent to each other modulo P. So this implies that these set of integers, the above integers must be congruent to, these must be congruent to 1, 2, 3 up till p minus 1 modulo p. So they must be congruent to this number. So these integers are congruent to these integer in some order. And now we can simply multiply. So when we multiply these two, so the order does not matter in that multiplication. And so we write a multiply by 2a multiply by p minus 1a this is congruent to 1 into 2 into 3 up till p minus 1 modulo p and we can see that now this is how many times a is repeating in this uh, and it is a, in the multiplication so we can say that a is appearing p minus 1 time so this is p minus a raised to power p minus 1 and inside we have 1 2 up till p minus 1 so that is p minus 1 factorial and on this side also we have p minus 1 factorial modulo p and now again we can cancel a p minus 1 from both sides so this will imply a raised per p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p because we note that the gcd of p and p minus 1 factorial this is equal to 1 because we can see that in the p minus 1 factorial we have all the terms including p minus 1 up till 1 but as p is prime so their gcd with these number is equal to 1 so hence we prove that for a uh, fermat theorem hold and for any integer p does not dividing a a raised to power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p now we follow this corollary that if p is a prime then a raised to power p is congruent to a modulo p for any integer a 
and to see this proof we can see that from the previous case here we have not taken the condition that p does not divide a whereas in the last Fermi theorem we have considered that p does not divide a or we may say that the gcd of a and p is equal to one so here we can consider the two cases when p divides a and in the second case we can take the case when p does not divide a so when p divides a in this case obviously a is congruent to zero modulo p this will hold in the definition of the congruences because when i say that a is congruent to zero mod p so this automatically implies that p divides a so that is another form of writing the divisibility and so we can raise the uh, if a is congruent to zero uh, modulo p so a raised to power p is also congruent to zero modulo p this will hold so we can write down clubbing these two congruences that a raised to power p is congruent to a modulo p and hence the this whole that what we uh, require to prove now in the second situation when p does not divide a in that case by fermat's theorem so we can see from the previous theorem that if p is a prime and p does not divide a then a raised to power p minus 1 this is congruent to 1 modulo p this holds and now multiply a on both sides so this is a standard property of the congruences that whenever we have a is congruent to b modulo n or any other number we can multiply the same uh, integer on both sides so we can have ac is congruent to bc modulo and this whole so this property i have already done in my earlier videos so now multiply by a on both sides so that will give me a raised to power p is congruent to a modulo p and hence that also satisfy our desired condition let's consider an example to uh, apply fermat's theorem so suppose that i'm interested in finding to find 5 raised to power 38 is congruent to what modulo 11 so we want to know what is the remainder here that will come here so now let's see in the reduced form as we can see now or if i just compare here this is the value for p and we know that here this integer this is the a and we see that p does not divide a or i can say 11 does not divide 5 so we can apply fermat theorem so this means 5 uh, the fermat theorem said that a raised to power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p so that is the statement of the fermat theorem so this means 5 raised to power 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 11 so that is what we can get write it from the fermat theorem directly and now you can see that we want to calculate 5 raised to power th uh, 38 so this is same as 5 raised to power 3 into 10 plus 8 so this is how we get 38 this is same as 5 raised to power 10 and whole raised to power 3 into 5 raised to power square and then i can write this as 4 which is uh, the in the multiplication the power becomes 8 now this 5 raised to power 10 i can replace i have already seen that this is equal to 1 so i am going to replace here this is same as 1 cube into 5 square whole raised to power 4 and but we can also see that 5 square which is uh, 25 so you can see that 5 square this is 25 25 is congruent to 3 modulo 11 because from here you can see that uh, 25 minus 3 that is 22 so 11 divides 22 so this is congruent to uh, 3 raised to power 4 this 5 square we have replaced by 3 and this 1 cube is same as 1 so 3 raised to power 4 we also know this is 81 and 81 is congruent to 4 modulo 11 because we can divide 81 minus 4 that is 77 so now we can see that 5 raised to power 38 this is congruent to 4 modulo 11. In fact Fermat's theorem help us in reducing the calculation effort while solving the congruences. In the second example now I will explain an application of the Fermat theorem. So Fermat theorem is can be used as a tool for testing the primality of a given integer. So for example we say that if a raised to power n is congruent to a modulo n fails to hold for some choice of a then we can say that n is necessarily a composite number or we can say that n is not a prime so now to explain this let me to consider say for example we consider n is equal to 117 and we also keep uh, because i want to do, do the computation so i'll keep a is equal to 2 and so we want to know what is 2 raised to 117 that is from here we want to know what is a raised to power n so we want to understand this expression so I have considered and let me to write this into a little reduced form using the division algorithm. So this is 7 into 16 plus 5. 
this is same as 2 raised to power 7 and then whole raised to power 16 2 raised to power 5 now we know that 2 raised to power 7 is 128 and this is congruent to 11 modulo 117 so because we inside uh, this is the value for uh, n we have considered so if i subtract 120 minus 11 this will be divisible by 117 so now we can see that 2 raised to power 117 this is congruent to 11 raised to power 16 so i have changed now this value 2 raised to power 7 as 11 and in the power we have the same value this is 2 raised to power 5 this is same as 121 raised to power 8 so we have splitted this 16 as 2 into 8 so for 11 square becomes 121 and in the power we have 8 this is 2 raised to power 5 this is same as now we can see that 121 this is congruent to 4 so we can write down 121 this is congruent to 4 modulo 117 and simplifying this further we get 2 raised to power 21 modulo 117 and now we can again look 2 raised to power 21 this is same as 2 raised to power 7 3 because we can consider so that means 2 raised to power 21 this is same as 11 cube because 2 raised to power 7 is 128 that i have already written here this is further equal to 121 into 11 this is further congruent to 4 into 11 this is further congruent to 44 modulo 117 and now we can see that uh, from this and from this expression that we have calculated that 2 raised to power 117 this is congruent to 44 which is not congruent to 2 modulo 117 and now from here we can see that this is not the equivalent form of what we required we required a raised to power n is congruent to a modulo n for any integer a so if this hold for any integer a then certainly we said that n is a prime and if this does not hold then we can say that this number n is not it has to be a composite so here in this case n is 117 so we say that this is composite and hence we can use Fermat's theorem or scrolly as the primality test also but it is important to mention this note here that if a raised to power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo n this whole for some integer a this does not guarantee that n is a prime integer so the converse of the Fermat's theorem is not true yes but if it is given that n is a prime then this congress hold uh, or we can check in this way that if this congress does not hold then we can definitely say that n is a composite number now to consider a supportive example to this note let me to show that 2 raised to power 340 is congruent to 1 modulo 341 so that means such a congress hold but we see that 341 this is not a prime as i can write this as 11 into 31 so 341 is not prime 